Okay, let's go ahead and subtract these fractions. And if you think you could do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the uh, solution here in just one second. But uh, for those of you that remember how to do fractions, and some, you know, for some of you, it might have been a long time. For me, I was taught fractions way back in the 1970s. So if you've been away from math for a while, you certainly have to kind of think about this stuff. And it's okay if you totally forgot how to add, subtract, multiply fractions. And if you're watching this video as a quick review, um, you're actually going to see probably the way you remember how to do fractions. Now, most of you are taught kind of one primary way to think about how to do a uh, addition or subtraction problem with fractions, and that could involve finding the LCD. So we're going to review this way, and then I'm going to show you another way to do this problem, which is very awesome, and we don't even have to deal with the LCD. And if you've never seen this way, you're going to be very happy that you watch this video because this is a great uh, uh, tool in mathematics. As a matter of fact, it's one of my uh, favorite math, what I call hack, or a little uh, shortcut that you definitely want to know. So anyways, we're going to get into all this in just one second, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle with math. It doesn't have to be that way, but what you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it. In the description of this video, it will help you out big time. Also, if you happen to be preparing for any sort of test that has um, a math section on it, there's a ton of them out there. Things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification, entrance exams like the Alex or AccuPlace. So if you're going to college or any kind of secondary school, you're going to run into one of these uh, tests. Anyways, I have a ton of test uh, prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my homeschool program for middle and high school mathematics. Um, matter of fact, we just won a lot of awards this year. Very proud of uh, that program. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But you should be taking your own awesome math notes. That's critical to be a um, successful math student. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into how to subtract fractions. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the answer right now. There you go. The answer to 3 eighths minus 1 20th is 13, uh, 13 sportiest or 13 over 40. There you go. You know, if uh, you have an answer, but you're like, wait a minute, did I get the right answer? Make sure your answer is fully reduced uh, just to when you do a comparison. In other words, let's suppose um, you had an answer. You were doing something that was 30 over 50. You never leave your final answer that way. You're always fully simplified. So in this uh, particular uh, problem, um, our answer would be three-fifths, not 30 over 50. But anyways, there is the answer. And if you got this, well, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%. And when you learn this back in elementary school, middle school, uh, I remember getting nice little stars next to my name when I did something awesome. There you go. Uh, so anyways, nice job. But let's go ahead and talk about how we subtract fractions. And I'm going to show you uh, the way that most of you were taught, and it's the way you want to think about this, okay? So anyways, uh, before we get to this problem, let's do an example uh, problem here. Let's do this problem, 7 tenths minus 1 tenths, okay? So how do we subtract these fractions? Well, in addition and subtraction problems when we're dealing with fractions, the first thing we do is we look at the denominators, these bottom numbers, and what are we looking at, okay? Well, hopefully you're um, thinking to yourself, you're saying, are these numbers the same? Okay, if they are the same, i.e., we have the same denominator, well, then this problem becomes very easy. All we do is we keep one denominator, so this in this particular example, it'll be 10, and then we're going to go ahead and subtract the numerators or these top numbers. So that would be 7 minus 1 right here. And of course, 7 minus 1 is 6 over 10. Again, right here, this is not fully simplified or reduced, and we can reduce that down uh, to 3 fifths, right? 2 goes into uh, 6, 3. And 2 goes into 5, uh, or 2 goes in 10, 5 times. So there you go. That would be your final answer. But the point of me doing this basic um, example is that we start off, uh, when we look at subtracting fractions or adding fractions, we have to have 
the same denominator in order to do this. So in this particular situation, we have a problem, right? We're like, well, this number is not the same as this number, so what do we do? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find a denominator, okay, a number that both 8 and 20 have in common. Okay, we're looking for a common denominator, and 8 and 20 have a ton of different numbers they have in common, but what we want to do is find the lowest one of those denominators that they have in common. So that's what we talk about finding the LCD. The whole idea is uh, we need to find uh, a new denominator because we got to get these the same. And of course, 8 and 20 are not uh, the same. So we need to rewrite these fractions such that they have a, a common denominator, but specifically the lowest common denominator. Now, in this particular problem, hopefully it's pretty easy for you to determine what the, LC, uh, what the LCD is. I find that most um, people, when I ask them, uh, what is the lowest common denominator? How do you find it? Well, if I give you a problem like this, one-third plus two-fifths, uh, most people are like, oh, the LCD here is 15. When I would say, well, uh, how did you know that? And you're like, well, just because, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to tell, and that would be correct. However, if I gave you a problem like this, 7 over 1, 38 plus 2 over, I don't know, 4, uh, 4, 12, okay, with these uh, denominators, this becomes much, much more difficult to find the LCD. So you need to think about how do you actually calculate the LCD. It's very, very important that you understand it's not only for arithmetic, Board, but for um, algebra as well. But anyways, let's go ahead and just see if you can get the LCD, and, and let's talk about that right now. Okay, so the LCD, or the lowest common denominator, when we have 8 and 20 as our denominator, is 40. Okay, so if you know that, or if you got that right, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face. Very, very good. Okay, so just a quick review on the LCD. By the way, I have a ton of additional uh, YouTube videos on uh, fractions, how to find the LCD, but if you really want to learn this stuff, I would point you towards uh, two of my courses in my Math Help program, uh, my Math Foundations course, which is a little mini course, three chapter mini course on basic mathematics, um, you know, how to multiply, place value, divide, add, subtract, fractions, uh, really, really great refresher course for those you need to review basic mathematics, uh, and or my pre-algebra uh, course. But anyways, let's go ahead and just quickly talk about how uh, 40 is the LCD. Now, if you're like, oh yeah, that is the LCD, I could just tell. Well, what you need to do to calculate the LCD is you take the denominator, okay, in this case it's 8 and 20, and we prime factor each of these denominators. For example, 8, I can factor as 4 times 2. 2 is a prime number, but I can continue to factor 4, uh, 2 is a prime factor because 2 is a prime number, but 4 I could continue to break down as 2 times 2. So 8 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 cubed, okay? And 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5, and of course we can write this 4 as 2 squared. So you want to um, uh, prime factor each of these respective numbers, and then what we need to do in the LCD is we have to represent each prime factor. So uh, here we have 2 cubed, and here we have 2 squared. So do we need to write both of uh, 2 cubed and 2 squared? No, we just we have 2s, uh, but two to, uh, we have um, a power of 2s. This one is uh, 2 to the cubed, and this is 2 squared. So which of these do we pick, or do we pick both? Well, because 2 is represented uh, twice here, all we need is 1 2 in our prime factor, but we always pick the highest power. So between 2 cubed and 2 squared, we'll pick the highest power of 2, so that's 2 cubed. And then right here, we need to have that other factor, prime factor represented, and 5. So you can see 2 cubed times 5 is going to be, this right here is going to be 8 times 5, which of course is 40. So if you ever were, you know, thinking to yourself, well, how do I exactly find LCD? There is a quick little crash course uh, on how you do that. Okay, so what does that mean now? Well, what we have to do is rewrite these fractions right here such that their denominators are 40. Okay, so this is our next phase of doing this problem. And 
you're probably asking yourself, well, can we, you know, write a fraction? You know, can we just change it like that? Yeah, you can uh, always write equivalent fractions. If I give you the fraction one half, I said, write me a fraction um, that has a denominator of 40 uh, that's uh, equal to one half. Well, that would just be 20 over 40. So this is equivalent to this. But how do we rewrite uh, fractions uh, such that they're equivalent, but we can uh, get to whatever denominator that we want? Well, let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so here we go. Uh, here's our fraction, 3 eighths minus 120. We want to convert or turn uh, each of these respective uh, denominators into 40. So how do I turn this 8 into 40? Easy, I just multiply it by 5. But if I multiply the denominator by 5 here, I have to also multiply the numerator. That's the trick. So 5 times 3 is 15, or 15 over 40 is the same thing as 3 eighths, okay? And now here, in this denominator, how do I turn that 20 into a 40? Just multiply it by 2, but then i got to multiply that numerator by 20, I'm sorry, by 2 as well, and you get 2 over 40. All right, so here now we finally have two uh, fractions, and the denominators are the same, so now we can finally subtract these fractions. So 15 over 40 um, minus 2 over 40, uh, they have the same denominator, so we're going to write that once and subtract the numerators 15 minus 2, which of course is going to be 13, or 13 over 40, and there you go. And um, that is the final answer, and it's fully simplified. Now remember, okay, this is probably the way that most of you learned uh, how to do fractions, and you need to understand this, okay, uh, for sure. But there is a nice little shortcut, and I'm going to show you this right now. And I call this the bow tie method, okay? The bow tie method, just like a bow tie you may wear. I don't wear these, okay? You're probably thinking to yourself, this guy loves math. He might wear a bow tie, and he may have a pocket protector and a bunch of pencils and calculators. Saying, nah, I'm not that. You'd probably, if you saw me walking down the street or whatnot, you'd just think I would be like a regular guy because that's who I am. But anyways, some people like bow ties, and they have this uh, kind of shape to it. Uh, this is what I kind of um, think of when I show you this particular pattern. So anytime you're adding or subtracting fractions, you can follow this pattern here. And it's very, very specific. Uh, and it is a great shortcut to add and subtract fractions. So you always start with this number in the bottom right. Okay, this denominator right here. And you're gonna multiply diagonally this way. Okay, so we're kind of forming this pattern here. So it's gonna be 20 times three, and we'll write that there. Next, you're going to go from this bottom left, and you're going to multiply that way. So that's 8 times 1, and we're going to put that there. And because this is a subtraction problem, we're going to put our little subtraction operator right there. This forms our numerator. Okay, so you can see this little bow tie pattern, uh, pattern taking place right here. And then lastly, we're going to multiply across to get our denominator, 8 times 20. There you go. This will be our denominator. So let's go ahead and do this math here. So 3 times 20 is 60. Uh, 8 times 1 is, of course, 8. And 8 times 20 is 160. Now you have 60 minus 8 is 52 over 160. But this fraction can be reduced. And when we reduce it, we get 13 over 40, just like we got last time. This is a great, great, great method to, uh, to learn about fractions, okay? I call it the bow tie method, and it's um, applicable for adding and subtracting fractions. The only downside on using this particular method is sometimes you have to reduce your answer, okay? So this won't automatically give you the LCD, but if you, um, you know, forget or uh, you're dealing with a problem that's too difficult, uh, to uh, find the LCD, and you're just like, you know, I just want to get an answer, and then I'll just work on reducing that answer. Well, then this is a great method to know. Okay, so let's go and wrap this up again. Uh, if you're struggling with fractions, well, if you're planning on doing any mathematics, if you're, you know, um, elementary school, middle school, high school, it doesn't make a difference. You have to know how to deal with fractions. And uh, most students don't like dealing with adding and subtracting fractions because they're always like, oh, I have to deal with that LCD. Well, listen, it doesn't have to be that difficult. Remember, um, 
The way to make things easier for yourself is to actually understand what's going on. That's why you need great instruction. So if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And again, if you need additional help with fractions or anything mathematics, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel and I have a ton of math courses that can help you out. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.